Hi, today I'm going to tell you it's not just the evidence you've gathered, it's how you use it. Evidence is continuous. In my field, perception, for example, the strength of the neural response to a visual stimulus uh, can be small, can be large. In a clinical test, the strength of a test response, for example, the number of virus copies detected in a COVID test can be small, can be large. Same with the clarity of a smudge on an x-ray or an MRI scan that indicates potentially the presence of a tumor. The same with the evidence of a test policy that's been applied uh, as social policy in terms of its benefit for the population. Evidence is also stochastic, it's random. So again, a visual stimulus will get neurons to respond, but if I show the same exact stimulus again, uh, the response might be a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. Similarly, a swab test for COVID can give a stronger response or a weaker response in a repeat on the same patient, but certainly will vary across multiple patients that have the same disease. Same goes with the uh, clarity of uh, smudge on an MRI scan or an X-ray. Same goes with the uh, effectiveness of a test of a policy on a small population. But evidence is used for discrete decisions, often binary decisions. Is the stimulus there or not? Does the patient have the disease or not? Did the policy benefit the population or not? And these discrete decisions have consequences. For example, were this a clinical uh, MRI scan and a radiologist were look, was looking for a smudge indicating the presence of a tumor, the doctor could say yes or could say no, I don't think there's a tumor there. The reality could be the patient has a tumor or does not, which leads to two correct answers, which are good outcomes. A hit, meaning the doctor says yes, the patient sent off to have a surgery and hopefully has a better quality of life. Uh, the doctor says no, the patient relaxes a whole lot and doesn't have any further medical tests. But there are also mistakes that can happen. A false alarm, the doctor says yes, you have it when they don't and they get a bunch of unnecessary medical tests and a lot of stress. Or the worst of all, the doctor misses the evidence of a tumor, sends the patient home, and then next time the uh, patient sees the doctor, the tumor has grown. Our standard model for this is that evidence is a continuous variable. The uh, amount of evidence on average when the tumor isn't present is small, but when it is present will be stronger evidence, but that evidence is stochastic. This is a probability distribution. So a, a patient without the tumor might get a strong test result. A patient with the tumor might get a weak test result, which is to say that if you have this much evidence, that could have come from a patient who didn't have the tumor, or more likely could have come from a patient, patient who did have the tumor. And so the rational thing to do is to set a criterion saying, yes, I think this patient has the tumor when the evidence is strong enough and saying no when the evidence is weaker than that criterion. But you, the decision maker, get to place that criterion. And you can place it, uh, once you place it, that will indicate the probability of a correct yes answer, the probability of a correct no answer, and the probability of the corresponding mistakes, a miss or an incorrect yes, a false alarm. But you get to place the criterion, and you can place it way to the left, which is to say very little evidence is needed to say yes, a liberal criterion. Or you can place it way to the right, meaning a lot of evidence is required before you'll say yes. And as you become more conservative, incorrect yes answers, like false alarms, will go down. But, incor but correct yes answers, hits, will also go down. So the choice of criterion is a trade-off. Now, this basic model is used in many, many uh, research areas. For example, what I'm calling the probability of a hit, patient has it, what's the probability I say yes, a clinician will call test sensitivity. And what I'm calling the probability of a correct no answer, the correct reject rate, they'll call test selectivity. Finally, decisions need to take into account all the elements of a decision the costs and benefits of each possible outcome as I've outlined them, some way of combining those cost events and their respective probabilities, a cost function. And finally, what's the probability this patient had the disease before I even ran the test? In other words, disease prevalence, the prior probability. And finally, it turns out that there's a correct answer to this. The math tells you where you should place your criteria and how liberal or conservative in your yes answers should you be. And it works as follows. You place your criterion where the likelihood ratio, the probability of getting this number if the patient did not have the, the disease relative to the probability of getting this number when the patient did have this disease, 
that criterion placement should be at such a position such that the likelihood ratio is the product of what the priors are telling you, the probability they have it divided by the probability they don't, and the probability benefits, the, the reward benefits for a correct yes and no answer. So the math tells you how to make this decision, how to use the evidence correctly.